Oh no! Monkeypox! <laughs> Hello there, you 5.6 million awakening wonders. Together we voyage towards truth and light in a world that would have us dim, dumb, numb, continually spellbound, hypnotized by screens like the one you're looking at right now. But I only told you to look at this so I could tell you to look away from this. If you're not a subscriber to this channel yet, please subscribe now before monkeypox consumes you. Only 60% of people are currently subscribed and I want to hear your comments below on everything, but in particular, the monkeypox phenomena. Some people will think already that monkeypox is being exaggerated and inflated to create economic opportunity and to introduce new regulation. Other people will say that monkeypox is being used to inflate ideas around conspiracy, to corral people into states of suspicion and cynicism. So let's have a look at how monkeypox is being reported on right now. Tonight, an unprecedented global spread of monkeypox has the CDC on alert. Now to the growing concern over the monkeypox virus. A leading advisor to the World Health Organization described the unprecedented outbreak of monkeypox. What we can point out already is that there is a degree of hysteria. Even if the ongoing news report goes on to tell you things like, oh, it's not that bad, we're already seeing that it's being ubiquitously reported. Imagine if you can for a moment a world where we hadn't just had that two-year pandemic, the subsequent lockdowns, the mandates, the confusion, the doubt and uncertainty that came with the two years we have just endured collectively. One thing I think is fantastic about it is all of us understand what I mean by that. To a degree, all of us have endured and encountered the same experience, even though we will, of course, see it differently because we have different priorities, different fears, different concerns, different attitudes towards authority, different attitudes towards health, different attitudes and reactions to fear. The question is, how would a subject like monkeypox, which, by the way, is a more catchy name than COVID-19, so they've already improved that. If COVID-19 was the Beatles, then monkeypox is, well, I suppose, the monkeys. Another thing to note is that already in the succinct news announcements, the WHO has been mentioned. The reason that we have to take something like monkeypox seriously, I mean, as consumers of news narratives, is because the last two years have shown us that unprecedented regulation can be easily introduced. It has shown us, too, that there are incredible opportunities for profit for very powerful organisations. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not interested in conspiracy theory. I'm interested in observing patterns and then communicating. And one of the things I've observed is that going forward, we're going to need unique and unprecedented levels of transparency and democracy. Transparency and democracy rather than authoritarianism and opacity. World Health Organization is investigating more than 90 cases of monkeypox in a dozen countries, including here in the United States. On to monkeypox now. On to monkeypox. They're already enjoying monkeypox a little bit because it's got a catchy name. Americans should expect to see more reported cases of monkeypox in the weeks ahead. That's the message today from the CDC. God, everyone's going on about monkeypox. It must be really serious. So far, agency officials say they've identified just one confirmed case of monkeypox in the US. One person's got it. I bet more people have fallen off skateboards and hit their heads on a tortoise. Why is there no news about that? But there are four suspected cases. US health experts insist anybody can catch monkeypox. I think what we're learning to be is diligent around news narratives, learning to discern truth from fiction, learning to appreciate and discern the implications of news stories. For example, if someone says anybody can catch monkeypox, what, does, what kind of feelings does that evoke in you? Like anyone, that means you, the people that you love can catch monkeypox. I don't want to be wrapped in cotton wool and protected from reality, although <laughs> that'll probably be the next lockdown. Wrap yourself in cotton wool and do not go out of the house. What kind of cotton wool? Did Johnson & Johnson make that cotton wool? Actually, they did. CDC reports it's now in the process of releasing about a thousand vaccine doses. OK, I wonder who will be making those. From a strategic national stockpile that's been approved for monkeypox. OK, so there's a lot of questions about monkeypox. What is it? Is it dangerous? Did Bill Gates really predict it? Is it the new COVID-19? And will it be used to sustain regulations and economic conditions and relationships that were established in the last couple of years that benefit powerful corporations, empower states to introduce regulations and deteriorate the quality of ordinary people's lives? Let's have a look. Today, the World Health Organization will hold an emergency meeting to discuss the ongoing monkeypox outbreak. Now, the WHO are already involved. You know that the WHO is funded in descending order by one, the American government, two, 
Bill Gates, a person, a person. I know it's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but I think Bill Gates is involved. Three, the United Kingdom. According to initial reports, the meeting will focus on how the virus is spread and vaccination, with talk of repurposing stocks of a smallpox vaccine for close contact with infected people. A lot of people are so frightened, anxious, and nervous about the last couple of years, and I don't blame them. It was a frightening time in many ways. I know that you and I and many people see this pandemic differently, see the regulations differently, see the responses and medications differently. Of course we do. We've got different lives. We've got different priorities, different considerations, different relationships with authority, different relationships with fear. But the idea that smallpox vaccines will be repurposed already suggests that one of the priorities might be financial. I'm not suggesting that that's the only consideration. I'm just saying that Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna in particular, which was a company on the brink of collapse, benefited incredibly from the last couple of years. I'm not saying that's the reason the pandemic happened. I'm not making any such suggestion. I don't have any authority to make such claims. What I'm saying is, is that big pharmaceutical corporations tend to operate in order to generate profit. That's not the world's most controversial thing. So it would be beneficial to them if you could sustain a climate of fear. Also, states benefit from a climate of fear because a population that is anxious and nervous is easier to manage. People that feel comfortable and free are generally speaking less obedient. Yet the talk about monkeypox is alarmist on both sides of the COVID-19 debate from those who favor restrictions and from those who don't. Kit Yates, a prominent member of Independent Sage, tweeted that we would soon be hearing the it's time we learn to live with monkeypox takes from politicians who have stopped giving a fuck about public health. On the other extreme, Mahid Nawaz claimed that the global palace coup will soon see an attempt to bring in new lockdowns in line with the proposed WHO pandemic treaty and pointed to Microsoft founder Bill Gates' prediction in November 2021 that the next pandemic would come from smallpox, to which monkeypox is related. One thing I think we can share is a general sense of mistrust in authority. And I think that this mistrust has been well earned by those in power. The profits gleaned from the pandemic, the mishandling of the regulations and lockdowns, the inability to point to direct correlation between effective lockdowns and lower fatalities all suggest that we should be more discerning when it comes to future regulations. Why would we hand over our personal freedom to unelected, centralized globalist movements? Why would any of us do that? The thing that I keep returning to mentally is transparency and democracy. Did I vote for it? Do I have access to all of the facts? If I have access to all of the facts and I voted for it, I'm up for it. But if I don't, then why should I be? So should we be worried? Let's consider monkeypox first. Cases have been detected in the Western world from Australia to the UK and the US, but in small numbers, a mere 20 cases in the UK. Moreover, unlike COVID-19, this is not a new virus. It's been circulating in equatorial Africa since the 1970s. It can quite often affect people there without causing any alarm elsewhere at all. In 2021, 75 people died of monkeypox in the Democratic Republic of Congo without any sign that anyone cared or was asking, as the New Scientist did in an alarmist headline yesterday, could monkeypox become a pandemic? That is an alarmist headline. And whether or not there are further regulations introduced, whether or not new vaccines are suggested, the climate of fear itself is already a political tool. What's alarming is not monkeypox, but the extreme responses to it on both sides. It looks like yet another wave of media hysteria of the kind all too common since COVID-19. Talk of automatic lockdowns for monkeypox are also alarming. This is not likely to be what Bill Gates calls the next major outbreak, though some appear to be preparing to treat it that way. Some of the world's major pharmaceutical companies are rubbing their hands together over the sudden outbreaks of monkeypox in countries where no cases have been reported for years. The nervousness generated by the emergence of COVID-19 awakened the desire to acquire vaccines and drugs among several first world governments. Our adaptability as a species is our great gift. We have adapted to conditions all over the world that have made us flourish. But the pressure to conform as a human being is one of the greatest pressures we know. That means that once we've been conditioned to respond in a particular way, we, without thinking, assume that that's the correct way to respond in subsequent scenarios that resemble what we've already encountered. Something like monkeypox could be treated as another pandemic that requires strong regulation, lockdowns, etc., and provides opportunity for pharmaceutical companies to make profit from potentially mandated medicines. Treat cases of smallpox, the Food and Drug Administration has approved a couple of drugs that could be used for this variant of the virus. 
Let's see what Pfizer and the FDA have to say about the potential monkeypox pandemic. The rising number of monkeypox cases in the US and Europe suggests the virus has already spread widely across communities. Pfizer board member and former FDA commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb told CNBC on Friday. OK, we'll get a lot of objectivity from Pfizer board member and former FDA commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb. I mean, with his previous, he's sure to handle this in an even-handed manner. Now there's been community spread, it may be hard to fully snub this out. Oh yes, yeah, Scott, and what would that mean? Would we need some sort of medicine? Oh, if only there was someone that could make this medicine. Oh, we could! And, you know, I suppose there'd be no price controls and perhaps we could grant you immunity from prosecution as well before we start. Oh, we could do... We could... Gottlieb added that there's been numerous disconnected cases indicating that the spread in the community is pretty wide. There's only one case at the moment. There might be a handful of cases. There could be as many as 200. Just try to remain calm. He said there might be a lot more infection than what health officials have found since it's had such a long incubation period and doctors don't know how to look for it yet. He noted that the virus is endemic in some countries with the Democratic Republic of the Congo reporting anywhere from five to 10,000 cases a year. So this is something that's been around for a while. And if you're in a country like Congo, something that you have to live with. But remember, the Congo is not in Europe or America. Pfizer has made nearly $26 billion in revenues in the first three months of the year. The bulk from its COVID-19 vaccine and a new pill to treat the virus, prompting fresh accusations of pandemic profiteering. Well, there you are. It is possible, you know, to alter reality radically. Perhaps not objective reality on the level of physics, although possibly, but certainly social reality and political reality and economic reality. For example, it's not impossible to say that during a pandemic, when there is a health crisis, any pharmaceutical company that makes medicines, particularly if those medicines and their research have been funded by taxpayer dollars or pounds or whatever it is in your country, then any profit they make should be similarly redistributed and be returned into public healthcare funding. That's a possibility. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm saying that's a possibility as well as Pfizer making $26 billion of profit in the first third of the year. And certainly that would help me to appreciate their motives. Like if when Scott Gottlieb's talking about it, he goes, as you know, we don't make any profits from this stuff. It all goes back into helping people get well. Then you think, oh, right, no, this guy's not clearly not a profiteering pirate. This is from Nick Dearden, director of Global Justice Now. Right from the start, Pfizer was clear that it wanted to make a lot of money from COVID. The company claims that its vaccine costs just under five pounds per dose to produce. Others have suggested it could be much cheaper. Either way, the company is selling doses at a huge profit. The UK government paid £18 a shot for its first order and £22 a shot for its most recent purchase. That means the NHS has paid a markup of at least £2 billion. Now remember, of course, that the government's money is your money. They don't have any money. The government's not got a car wash around the back where they're making money that they can invest back in. That's your money. It's been claimed that the company initially tried to pitch their medicine to the US government for close to $100 a dose. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they be ashamed of that? Because they spend a significant amount of money lobbying the government, controlling the government. They fund the FDA to the tune of 45% of the FDA's funding that's supposed to be the body that regulates them. They are designed and organised in order to generate profit. So no, I'm not condemning any individual. This is a systemic problem. Or maybe not a problem if you're one of the people that benefits. It's a systemic attribute. Companies like Pfizer behave more like hedge funds, buying up and controlling other firms and in intellectual property rather than traditional medical research companies. Corporations like Pfizer should never have been put in charge of a global vaccination rollout because it was inevitable they would make life and death decisions based on what's in the short-term interest of their shareholders. Is it wise to give Pfizer that amount of power? Here's Albert Baller in a clip many of you will have already seen in 2018 at the World Economic Forum. Oh yeah, those guys, Davos, talking about a pill which, to give you full transparency and clarity, is for schizophrenia that would leave a chip in the person that's taken it, making it possible to track them. I'm not suggesting that Pfizer are putting chips in any of their medications. For me, that seems like a pretty outlandish thing to say. I'm just saying that here's Albert Baller, the CEO of Pfizer, saying that they could do that with schizophrenia medications. Let's take a quick look. It is a basically biological chip that it is in the tablet. And once you take the tablet and dissolves into your stomach, it sends a signal that you took the tablet. So imagine the applications of that, the compliance, uh, the insurance companies to know that the medicines that patients should take, they do take them. Uh, it is uh, fascinating what happens in, in uh, this field. Now, obviously, Albert Baller, in that context, is talking about a healthcare medicine that presumably could be administered with people with diminished ability to take responsibility for themselves, i.e. schizophrenia patients. Therefore, it would be unfair and unjust for me to suggest that 
there is a plan in place to put that kind of technology into medicines that are given to people that still are in charge of their faculties. But just knowing that Pfizer have the ability to do that suggests to me that democracy and transparency must be key principles when dealing with pharmaceutical companies, along with new regulations that prevent pharmaceutical companies from reaching the kind of profits they reached during the last pandemic. If we want transparency, if we want clarity, even if we want pragmatism when dealing with matters of health, you cannot have the warping objective of those kind of profits anywhere in the matrix of their behaviours. Otherwise, you will get a reality that is organised around the most powerful forces in the system. And if the most powerful forces are corporate profit and state control, you will discover that you are living in a reality organised around those principles. Is monkeypox nothing? Is it a hysterical confection in order to increase regulation? I don't know yet. Probably it's neither of those things. But if you haven't learned from the last couple of years that we should be circumspect about regulation, we should be circumspect about granting the opportunity to generate huge profits to companies like Pfizer, then I don't think you've been paying proper attention. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that. I think that this is a time for increased democracy. You being able to control your own community yourself, whether that's a work community, an education community, a health community, a geographical community. This is a time for more democracy, not less. And in order to have proper democracy, you need transparency. You need freedom of speech. You need the ability to communicate freely. What concerns me about the ongoing hysteria and propagation of fear is it's creating a climate where we can't think straight, where we can't see straight, where we're afraid to say the wrong thing the whole time. That's the exact opposite of what we need. It's the exact opposite of what we deserve and we need to unite beyond traditional tribes right now in order to confront it. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below how you think we should handle the potential monkeypox scenario. Let me know what you think about Pfizer, their profits. Let me know what you think about that little bit of technology alluded to at the end there and the craziness of that. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and circulate it widely. We need this message to reach as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, yet subscribe right now and if you enjoyed this video have a look at one of these ones these are fantastic videos also please sign up to my mailing list so I can communicate with you continually I do a new unique bulletin video every single week and I tell you about live events I'm doing and all sorts of stuff sign up to it it's really important that you do but more important than any of that stuff is that you please stay free